I personally use two monitors on my desktop so I can have more applications open and be more productive. I also have a third portable monitor that I use when I need even more screen real estate. That portable monitor has an issue though. It only works off battery power, so I only get about three hours of use before I need to charge it again. So instead of using the portable monitor, I also have the option of using a laptop or tablet as an extra monitor. Space Desk is the program that helps me with this. So if you're in the need of extra screen real estate and you don't want to buy another monitor, you should give Space Desk a try. Before I continue, it's important to know that Space Desk does not support encryption. So do not, I repeat, do not use it in a network that you don't trust. Anyone with enough knowledge can eavesdrop on your display session because of this. Also, Space Desk only works on Windows computers. So if you're a Mac user, you will need to find another option. I'm only going to use Space Desk wirelessly because it's the most convenient route. Also, a USB connection only works if your iOS or Android device supports USB tethering. And that's only available for devices with modems that support mobile connections like LTE. I have a phone with USB tethering support, but I'm never going to use Space Desk on a device with such a small screen. So the way Space Desk works is by first making sure all the devices that you are going to use are connected to the same Wi-Fi network. You then download a server program from the app's official website located at www.spacedesk.net. Install the server application on your Windows computer, and then install separate client apps on the devices you want to use as extra displays. Client apps are available for Android, iOS, and Windows. There's also an HTML5 client app that works with any compatible web browser at viewer.spacedesk.net. The performance is not as good as what you get with the native apps, but this will allow you to use a Mac or Linux computer as a client. Once the client app is installed on an Android or iOS device, Open the app and it will detect your computer running the Space Desk server. If they are not detected, you have the option to manually enter the IP address of the computer with the server software. After you connect, your Android or iOS device will then act as an external monitor. Now go into the computer's display settings to set your desired resolution and display scaling. Then use your computer as you normally would, with the added benefit of dragging windows from your desktop to your iOS and Android device. Touch support works with the client apps, so you can use your finger to select options and drag windows around. But multi-touch gestures do not work, so you cannot pinch to zoom or use any gestures that require more than one finger. You also have the option to use more than one device as an extra monitor. I was able to use my Chromebook, iPad, and television as monitors all at the same time. The best part about Space Desk is its pricing. It's completely free, for the time being. Space Desk is currently in beta, and a premium version with more features will be available in quarter three of 2021. The future free version will only allow the use of one extra display and have limited touch support, so you will lose many of the features you can use now for free. The premium version will have all the features you can enjoy now, but it's currently unknown when the encryption will be ready. Let's now talk about performance. I used the default client app settings to test this out. I'm connecting to a wireless end router using a 5 GHz connection that's about 2 feet from my desktop and laptop. I have a faster router, but it's farther away from my desktop. Just keep in mind that many factors can affect performance when it comes to wireless. The router you use, the band, the distance from the router, and your device's wireless capabilities all affect performance. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with the performance of Space Desk. It's not as good as using a real monitor but the performance is definitely more than acceptable. When working with a Windows desktop and graphically simple applications like word processors and spreadsheets, things work really well. Dragging applications and Windows is smooth and typing text feels responsive. There is a tiny delay that's noticeable when dragging Windows around, but it's not bad enough to be deal-breaking. As far as image quality is concerned, you can notice banding on any gradients, and on the desktop icons, you can notice some artifacting around them. So how do movies and video watching work? Well, video does look really good at the default settings, but there is noticeable banding. So you do not want to use this with content that you want the absolute best image quality from. It works great if you have a news broadcast, podcast, or some YouTube videos alongside what you're working on. 
Now let's talk about gaming. I tried some classic retro games and some more modern first person shooters. Classic gaming works surprisingly well with my Xbox One gamepad. The simplicity of the images really helps keep the performance up for Space Desk, but there were stutters along the way. I also really didn't notice any lag when controlling my characters, but doing quick tests between my main monitor and the Space Desk display did show a difference where my main monitor was more responsive. As far as FPS gaming is concerned, I tried two games, Left 4 Dead 2 and Crisis 2. Both games defaulted to a resolution of 1024 by 768 and at that resolution, mouse and keyboard support worked really well and I really didn't notice any lag. But like with the retro gaming test, when I switched to my main monitor, I did notice the main monitor being more responsive. It was still very impressive to see how good the performance was with the Space Desk display. It was definitely playable. Weirdly, using my Xbox One gamepad with the first person shooters was much worse. The lag and delay was definitely noticeable and to me was unplayable with the gamepad. It's strange how the retro games were playable on a gamepad but unplayable with the first person shooters. Maybe the simplicity of the graphics helps provide a much better experience. Left 4 Dead 2 did not allow me to switch resolutions from 1024 by 768 on the Space Desk display but Crisis 2 did let me use 1080p. In 1080p, the mouse and keyboard delay was definitely noticeable and the game was unplayable at that point. Anyway, it really makes no sense to use the Space Desk monitor for gaming when you already have your main display available. I just did these tests out of curiosity. I also tried all my tests with the quality settings at the highest. At those settings, image quality was significantly better with banding being much less noticeable but still there. However, there was a lot of stutter, so it's probably too much for what my network can handle. A direct USB connection should help if you choose to go that route. So if you want to use a laptop or tablet as an additional computer monitor, Space Desk works really well for that purpose. Since currently there's no encryption, it should only be used on networks that you trust. If you keep that in mind, you'll have a great alternative monitor by just using devices you currently own. Anyway, if you found this video helpful, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you, and I'll speak to you next time.